Shumai for any guy and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Anwin for anyone who's new here and let's get back into a building in Planet Zoo. And I am continuing in the Wetlands Conservation Park today. This habitat is going to be finishing off the habitat animals from the Wetlands Park. I'm like finishing off and I'm gonna be putting the last two in this habitat. They still like go in with the conservation theme because both the wild water buffalo and the Nile Lequi are actually endangered animals. So they go with the conservation pack animals too because they are also endangered. So this one is gonna be like a more safari style habitat. And the first thing I needed to do was split up the water from where I put the restaurant to where I wanted the habitat. And the easiest way to split up water is just to make a barrier out of terrain nice and quick. For some reason this was going a little bit iffy, but I think it was all to do with the pathing. Because sometimes paths are too close to the terrain or too close to the water, which can make things obstructed and you don't really know why they're obstructed but usually it's the path's fault <laughs> but I deleted quite a lot of the path and it was still a bit iffy so I just rejigged it but yeah if you're having water obstructed and you can't put it to the level that was there before so you remove it and you want to put it back but it's saying water obstructed now. It's usually because the path is too close to the water. I think you need it at least a meter away from the water. So really what you need to do is delete the path, get it out of the way, place the water down where you want it, and then place the path where you had it before. It'll all work, it's just sometimes the water can think it's obstructed when it's not. So you just need to remove the path, place the water down, and then place the path back in. I'm not sure whether I mentioned it in the last video, but I don't normally like putting my inspiration and reference images on the videos because I'm never sure whether they're like copyrighted or anything. Would it be helpful to create like a Pinterest board with all of my inspiration images for each of the habitat? I would start one from fresh. So just from this habitat onwards, would you go into a link if I put like a link in the description to look at the images? Is that a helpful thing or do you just want to see what I make? Because I usually talk about these things and I feel like odd not actually showing you, but if you were curious, I'd link a Pinterest board in the description so you could see all of the inspirational images that I'd found to create these habitats. And I also ended up adding the African buffalo and the Indian rhino to add some species enrichment for the two wetlands animals and they needed a little bit extra space so I've added some more space in that island at the back of the habitat for them and I also wanted to create uh, elevated viewing area for the guests in this habitat as well because it's so big it's quite nice having something inside the habitat to get a better view of the animals and I wanted it to be like a circular observatory so I started off trying to make a path that was kind of circular there's lots of different ways of doing circular paths I haven't quite mastered it yet so you probably won't get a tutorial from me and I was happy with this circle shape it's not an exact circle unfortunately so I couldn't actually use my circle building trick to create the walls so instead I actually utilized the align to surface feature which I don't normally use a lot because align to surface can be helpful and it can also hinder you like you shouldn't really have align to surface on when you're placing trees because that can make some really wonky looking trees normally trees will grow straight up so you don't really want align to surface on when your surface is tilted but with this having align to surface on helped quite a lot because it helped me get the right sort of angle for these curved panelling pieces and then using advanced move I then tweaked the angle a little bit to smoothly align the panelling to the edge of the path to create a building and I thought the panelling was good because it's technically walls so it could 
it will like enclose the whole area but you can still see through it and it's still like open air but it can disguise the guests from the animals and it still looks like a solid building without it being completely closed off so guests can still like look through the gaps of the panelling uh, if they want to like look in a different area other than the designated viewing spots in this that I've given them by swapping out the different heights of the panelling once I got everything aligned to surface I then used advanced duplicate which is control x to duplicate the panel and change it to a different height and then delete the old panel which helps it stay in the same angle without having to like redo the alignment and I'm doing the same for like this top half of the building which is all going to be in the one meter curved pieces and I'm just duplicating the bottom paneling selecting the one meter piece and then dragging it up to the top and utilizing the al align to surface again for these pieces I wanted to line those edges from the different heights that I created to make it look more like a window rather than just a gap and aligning that panel to the surface of the edge of the panels so it's nicely aligned to that edge as well because nothing is align to the world axis which is just like my usual go-to is just aligning everything to the world axis but that's not really possible when I try to align things to a path or making a big round curved building like this you can't get aligned to world axis so it can be a little bit more tricky but these paneling pieces finishes this off quite nicely. The guests can actually watch the animals swim underneath this observatory tower as well. <laughs> you can actually see the wild water buffalo. I think it's the wild water buffalo. May have made a mistake putting two different buffaloes in this habitat because <laughs> from a distance I'm like which one are you? But I really like this like hole in the center where you can see the animals swimming and I just put a glass panel there so it looked more like a window and the supports for the observatory too which I just used the paneling that I put in for the windows so like the edging of the windows duplicated it and dragged it down to have a nice evenly spaced out support beam because I needed to make sure that the animals could actually swim underneath this observatory because I like the fact that the guests could look down in the center so I wanted to make sure that they would actually swim through this even though this is a wetlands focused habitat I still do want some parts of this to be conservation themed which includes the roof shelter for the observatory I wanted it to be round but really interesting so to start with I used this round clay roof as a template for like the sort of size and angle I want the roof to be at. Templates are just like my favorite thing with Planet Zoo. It can be really hard to just make something from scratch. This was inspired by a water tower observatory building in Singapore. Yes, it was Singapore called the Kranji Marshes. But I really like the roof of this building where it was a sort of spiral shape but all of the like levels of this spiral were different angles and not all of them were in the same level either so it was like lowering and hiring and I didn't want to necessarily recreate that with this roof but I wanted there to be different angles and different levels of the spokes which would then create different roof shapes. I went with the grass roof again, but this one's gonna be different. <laughs> it's not gonna be plain like what I did for the restaurant, but uh, I did want to add some green grass roof for this observatory building. So I used the align to surface again, and this time the align to surface helped me have the right angle for each one of the spokes because like I said I did each spoke at a different height 
and different angle around. After I did that one grass panelling, I had no idea what to do for the rest of the roof. I knew I wanted that, but I wanted to brainstorm a little bit more. So <laughs> I wasted, it's not like I wasted time, I avoided what I should have been doing and tried something to do something else instead. So like I mentioned earlier, I needed a bit more land space for these animals in the habitat, but I hadn't really planned for that extra island area at the back. So I didn't really know what to do. So I filled it with trees. <laughs> And for this water site, I wanted to add lots of aquatic plants like reeds. I uh, mainly did this for the Nile Lequi because one of the fun facts for the Nile Lequi says that because they live close to bodies of water and spend long periods grazing on aquatic plants, Nile lequies are a key prey species for crocodiles. So instead of focusing on like the sad part that crocodiles like to munch on them, I just thought I would give them plants to actually graze on and eat in this habitat. So I decided to add more grass paneling in and I thought because this is like a five spoke roof, uh, which actually gives six spaces in the center, I thought I would do three covered with the grass panelling, but I thought the grass roof was just too plain. There was a lot of very natural tones, like the green was a nice pop of colour, but it's still a very natural toned build. And I thought to make it a little bit more cheerful, add a little bit of pop of colour in the build, I added in some of the decals, the signs from the conservation pack and from base game with the bugs and the flowers just to add a bit of cheeriness to this. Like in my head I felt like this could have been designed by a local school. The little ones might have designed something like this and added in all of the fun flowers and insects to the roof. I've gone in with the panelling now and I'm trying to do different patterns for the panelling in the gaps between the grass roof pieces. So I started off with doing spokes going out at the same angle as the original spokes and then for this one I wanted to do like a diagonal line and I didn't want anything to be perfectly angled so for the diagonal one I just made up an angle I didn't use angle snap at all but for this last shape I wanted to do straight horizontal lines so we've got a vertical line a diagonal line and a horizontal line in the gaps for the horizontal lines I then went in with the thinner panel piece to create different thicknesses and different shapes within the shapes. And then for the diagonal one, I created another diagonal angle, but I just wanted it to be like a different angle and the thinner lines were then closer together as well. So there was more of them as well, just to give a bit of a variation. And lastly, for the vertical lines, I added in some of the thinner pieces in the center of the spokes and then I decided to do different lengths of those so it looks kind of like a star and I went to the stepping stones I tried a couple of different stone pieces to create the stepping stones but I found these which I have no idea where they're from they're a base game thing I used the filters and I searched for base game and stone non-grid props from the different tabs in the filter and these stone pieces have like a embossed engraving something like that of a rhino and I thought that was just perfect I've got a rhino in this habitat it fits in with the species theme but it also adds a little bit more decoration the only thing that would make this better is if it was flexi color but everything's better if it's flexi color <laughs> and I also wanted to create like a dock I thought to save some time and to save the amount of objects for the build, 
I would use the grass roof panels for the wood texture and I thought it'd just be nice to have that extra little like overhang. I've got one of those in a near by park area that like kind of overlooks a pond so I was kind of had that in mind for this and to create the <laughs> fence I actually used the conservation pack blinds because I like the angle of the paneling so this isn't the same panels as the observatory but it's the same wood texture. This is when realism was just like, okay, I'm bored now. <laughs> so I added these scarecrows because they're part of the <laughs> enrichment. I thought I would put a scarecrow on the dock so we could look over the water. And I was just like, nah, the scarecrow's not just looking, he's fishing. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta have a little bit of fun. <laughs> so I made my scarecrows fish. <laughs> And this is going to be part of the conservation theme. Not like encouraging fishing, but encouraging people who do like to fish as a hobby to put the fish back. I love watching Matthew Poser, a camping YouTuber, nature YouTuber, like goes camping, he goes fishing, he goes on a boat with his dog. I love his dog more than anything. Monty and Ruga, absolutely amazing, but when I made this fishing thing, I thought of Matthew Poser. The conservation boards do actually have a conservation education board for overfishing. I, I think it's called overexploitation. It does have a, an image that shows overfishing, uh, which I was really happy with because then it can kind of show more about the theme that I wanted to go with with this habitat. These education boards will give education for the animals in the habitat. This one's supposed to be for the wild water buffalo, I think. But I replaced the image with one of the conservation board images, the over-exploitation one, to show the fishing. So I wanted to find objects that looked like they could be used for fishing or found as, like, rubbish that are found in the water so I, I used a hose pipe as like a fishing line rope I also added in some more base game ropes my, my favorite thing I thought I was like oh yes this is perfect the lampshades from the conservation park look like fishing baskets like what you would put in for like crabs I think I wish we had things like those uh, plastic rings that you find on cans I don't do you still have that i wish we had more like plastic items that could look like rubbish like that so we could go for like the save the turtles thing and just finishing up filling in the education boards with around the rest of the habitat add some of those education boards in the observatory building as well i'm not going to replace all of the images with the fishing conservation board image well some of them are going to show the animals that it is actually given the education for and then some of them are going to show the fishing image just to give it a little bit of variation that's pretty much it just onto the pretties now if you have any ideas for any habitats that link with like a fun conservation theme like this or if you want to suggest an animal to build a habitat for next in this zoo, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I don't mind any variants of animals. I'll just go with this overall wetlands conservation theme. I'm always up for suggestions for any decorations you'd like me to try to build, any themes you'd like me to go for in a habitat, and any animals you'd like me to build a habitat for and also let me know what you think in the comments about this habitat did you enjoy watching a different sort of style of habitat than i usually do with like more of a safari natural style you know me though i can never fully stick to that and i've got to add something silly and fun in there <laughs> like those fake fishermen but yeah i'm gonna leave it off there if you enjoyed the video smash that like button and if you haven't already and you would like to it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever i upload a new video i upload speed builds on wednesdays and shorts tutorials on saturdays thank you so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you next time Goodbye!